In space, distances between inhabited systems are huge. Traveling at hyperdrive can take weeks to get there. This was my first long trip. As it continued, the freighter seemed to get smaller. A fellow crewmate had explained to me it often happens on a first voyage. Being aboard a vessel for an extended period in deep space is unlike living on a planet's surface, where you can step out for a breath of fresh air. You must come to terms with the claustrophobia, or it can drive you crazy. It's possible to get anti-anxiety meds, but I found what I needed from breathing and meditation techniques. Another new experience for me was Ori culture. It seemed normal for Ori to express feelings and to communicate about various subjects that Tians would never discuss. It took me some mental effort to open up with my crewmates. This was my special assignment. Fortunately, everyone was keen to help me. I think they saw me as a young orphan male, one who needed help to overcome shyness. On Tian Prime, I'd grown up without a father figure in my life, and my mother had passed when I was young. It was Tian culture not to show emotion and keep thoughts to yourself. Although I wanted to distance myself from my Tian heritage, I found it hard to do. I would have struggled with anxiety over the closeness with my crewmates if I didn't have the captain's assignment on my mind. When traveling in space, you need activities to keep you from going crazy and from letting your mind and body atrophy. You get assigned duties to keep the freighter working, and then you have learning or fitness activities. I studied many of the various online training programs, and I spent time in the gym as well. I was keen to do well on my first voyage. For a while, I succeeded. About 12 days since we left the trading post, I heard a loud alarm sound. After days of smooth running and only the hum of the hyperdrive engines, this was quite disturbing. Soon after, I heard the captain over the communication system. All crew were being pursued by multiple hostile vessels. They've picked the most remote area to come after us, there being no nearby inhabited systems. They aren't responding to our hails, and it looks likely they intend to board us. This isn't a training drill. Soon after, I felt the explosions from the aft direction. We were being fired upon. I was in the cargo hold, performing an inventory check. Each hit shook everything around me. So I moved into an open area so that nothing overhead would follow me. Where can I go? Where would the safest place be? I had no training or experience dealing with pirates. I figured it was pirates. It had to be. Who else would be out here attacking an unarmed freighter? Even if I'd completed training for pirate attacks, I don't think the pirates would have watched them. Just then the hum of the hyperdrive engine stopped, and I knew we were slowing to sublight speed. This far out in deep space without propulsion was already a death sentence. Definitely time to panic. It had been several minutes since that announcement from the captain. Perhaps the communications system was down in this area. Not knowing our status wasn't something I liked. The cargo bay had no window, so I had no clue what was happening. I exited the cargo bay and find somewhere safer. I figured pirates would be interested in cargo, so the cargo bay was a dumb place to hide. As I entered the hatch into the main corridor, I could tell there was some kind of fire happening aft in engineering, with smoke and fumes coming up the corridor. Fire suppression couldn't contain it, so I turned in the opposite direction, and in the chaos, I immediately stumbled into another crew member. I knew her name was Kaluna, a junior officer. She was from Ori 7 and worked in purchasing, which could be useful when trading, but utterly useless when dealing with pirates. I mean, imagine the pirates with a look of fear on their faces. Watch out, this one's a purchasing agent. Ah! I grabbed her hand and said, we have to go. She made no argument, and we proceeded forwards along the main corridor, away from the smoke. Our situation seemed hopeless, but I felt I had to do something. Like I said, I had no training for dealing with pirate attacks. Past a couple of bulkheads and along another corridor, we found a window that looked out into space. Through it, we saw several other vessels closing in on our freighter. One looked like it was docking with the large airlock in the cargo bay. I was glad I'd left that area. There were no further announcements. I couldn't tell if anyone was still alive or in command. Kaluna said nothing, and I guess she was in shock. I clenched her hand, fearing one or both of us would die otherwise. We kept moving and soon came across a hatch labeled in Ori that read Escape Pods. We hid in there, figuring that the pirates were boarding the freighter. Hopefully, they might miss us. 
Once inside the first hatch, there were more hatches for multiple escape pods. I opened the first hatch and Kaluna climbed in. I climbed in after her and closed the hatch and waited. My heart was pounding and it was a struggle to calm down. Looking around, I saw no weapons, nothing to defend ourselves with. It wasn't an armory, it was an escape pod, so we waited.